our application searches for property listings. Therefore, we need to create, obviously, a basic search page. So let's go ahead, do that, and learn a couple more things along the way. Because this is a new page, obviously, we're going to put it inside of our QML slash pages folder. So if we right click that, hit add new, let's go to vplay apps and click on page. Choose that and let's give this an obvious name such as search page. Hit next and let it go off and create it. Okay, so our page has a title called new page. Well, we obviously don't want to call it that. We would prefer to call it something such as property cross. Because the search page will actually be the main page of our app, it's the one that loads up, we just want to call it the app name. We don't necessarily want to call it search because other things on the screen signify that this is a search page, such as the search box and the hints hinting at the fact you should put a location into the search box. Now we're going to give this page an ID, which will be in camel case. And if you don't know what camel case means, that basically means the first letter of the first word is lowercase and the first letter of each subsequent word is uppercase. That's camel case. If you're from .NET, uh, that's quite a common thing. Now, what else does this page need? Well, it would be nice if we had some sort of indicator telling us that the page was going off and searching for stuff and waiting for a return of data. So what we're going to add to this page is what's called a bar button. And if we call this, right, bar item, which will be a navigation bar row, and you'll see it's highlighted in the autocomplete. This is going to create a right bar item, or rather, it's going to create a row inside the navigation bar. Remember, the nav bar is at the top of the app. And we're going to put something inside there. And this is kind of, it's a standard thing to do in mobile apps for the most part. And these bar items are of a fixed size on your uh, nav bar. So what are we going to put there? Well, we're going to put what's called an activity indicator bar item. And as the name suggests, this is going to be simply a spinning circle or something similar that indicates something is happening. You can actually see one of these in the status bar of your iOS device and your Android device. That's the bar right at the top that's not part of the app but part of the system. When you make a network call, you're loading a web page, you'll see a little spinning circle in there usually. This isn't that, but it is a similar concept. This runs inside the app, obviously. Okay, now we're going to give this a property called visible. So we can say if it's visible or not. So if it's not visible, obviously we're not doing anything. And for now, we're just going to say true. So it's always visible. But later on, we'll revisit this and only make it visible when some property such as loading is set to true. When loading comes back to false because we've received some data, then visible will be set to false, the same as that property. But we're not going to cover that yet, just set it to true for now. Okay, what else do we want to put inside of this navigation bar row? Well, let's have an icon button bar item. And as you imagine, this is simply a button, but it's a special subclass of a button that fits inside of that navigation bar correctly. Which icon are we going to use? Well, we're lucky because we get lots of icon types that come with this system. And so you can see all the things we have. We're going to have a heart. Why a heart? Because this will be favorites. Let's title this favorites. Okay, there's one final, well, actually, there are two final things we have to do here. The first is, you might wonder, what happens if we want to translate our app? Well, if we just have a string that's hard-coded, such as favorites or the title for the page property cross, then we're going to have an issue because we won't be able to translate it. So what we're going to do is look up this function in Qt, in the Qt documentation, 
that tells us about internationalization and localization with Qt Quick. And all that means is translation and perhaps changing the order of text according to what locale the user is in. And this tells us to use this function, qstr, for all literal user interface strings. Now, when you do this, it creates a key. That's the name of that string. So let's say you've got this text called back. It'll use that key back to go and look for the appropriate translation in your application. Obviously, we're not going to translate our application, but it's good practice to know this stuff early on. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add qstr to property cross and the same for favorites. And that sets us nicely to translate this app later on, which you might actually want to do if it's a property search app because you'll be in different locales. We can go ahead and save that. Now, the final thing that we have to do is reference this search page in the property cross main page. So we're building a little hierarchy here. To do that, it's pretty simple. Let's just remove this page because that was kind of our placeholder before. And let's simply say, hey, this will be a search page and the IDE should pick that up automatically. Open and close our curly braces. You can put them on a separate line if you so wish, but that's not my programming style. I like to have things pretty compact or as compact as I can make them. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's run this in the live view. And we should be presented with the search page, including all of the additions we've made. Right, so we have our title at the top. At the moment, it doesn't actually fit. And if you expand the window, it does. And that's something we can address later on. Android, it does fit because the text is by default left aligned. And if we run it on desktop, you have a bit more space. Right, so we've got these two icons. And if we just go back to our search page, first we have the activity indicator bar item, which is this swirly looking item. And then we should have icon type heart here. And I don't know why this is showing me a menu button. Actually, scratch that. I do know why. That's my own uh, fault for not actually looking at my own creation smartly enough. So it's shown now. We now have a heart icon. But watch what happens if we close this up. It closes up that menu. So there's a breakpoint. And if you're familiar with Bootstrap, it's like setting a size class, you know, middle, uh, large, small in Bootstrap. And once you go lower or smaller than that size class, it bunches up menus together so that when you click it, it gives you a list of the menu. And that allows you to take care of different device sizes. So if our device is large enough, we get the heart, such as in iOS there. Let's have our resolution. Let's see what this looks like on iPhone 4. So it would be plenty large enough on an iPhone 4, which is the narrowest screen that we get along with the three and the five. On the iPhone X, we have something that looks a bit different. This is to accommodate, obviously, for the notch at the top of the iPhone X. And we'll just go with an iPhone 6. So this is what it'll look like. And if we close this up here, it doesn't actually change because iOS doesn't do that by default. But Android, I believe, does. So Android automatically compresses those items. Okay, so that's how we create a new page, how we reference it. Also, how we create various properties for the page, such as title, how we translate it using QSTR, which we're not going to do, but it sets you up in good stead for the future when you do want to translate your app. We looked at what a right bar uh, item is. We've added a row into that with an activity indicator that we haven't done anything with yet, but we will. And also an icon heart, which allows us to do the favorites. Okay, on to the next section.